Here are 14 ways to remove backgrounds in Photoshop from elementary to elite. Let's start with one of the oldest tools in Photoshop and with us since version 1.0, the magic wand. All you got to do is click in the sky, then press the backspace key, the delete key on the Mac to get rid of it. But notice if we zoom in, easy tool to use, very jagged results. Notice if I zoom out, I have another problem, which is that even though I got rid of this bottom portion of the sky, underneath the horses, the sky above remains. And so what I need to do is undo a couple of times and then turn off that contiguous checkbox right there. And then if you click, you'll select all the sky. However, notice if I zoom in the hair, if anything, looks even worse. Now let's shift our attention from one of the oldest tools in the software to one of the newest. Introduced last year, the Remove Background button. All you have to do is click on it. You don't have to click on the sky at all. More good news, we don't have jagged hairs this time around. We barely have any hairs at all. Right next door to Remove Background, we have its close cousin, Select Subject, which uses the same AI, this time to generate a selection outline. If you want to get rid of the background, that's a second step. You have to click on this mask icon right here, at which point we end up with some pretty nice hair, as you can see. However, we have a little bit too much residual sky. Now, in my case, the subject of the photo is set against a kind of cloudy blue sky background, in which case you might go to the Select menu and rather Rather than choosing subject, which is the same as the select subject button, you would choose sky. In which case, as opposed to selecting the foreground of the image, Photoshop is going to select the background. Which means if you click on the mask icon here, you're going to mask away the foreground. In which case, just press Control i or Command i on the Mac to invert the layer mask. And we end up with this effect here. No more residual sky in the hair. Although we are missing the side of his face right there and we have some extra sky caught in the crook of his arm. Now when your background is the sky, another way to work is to go to the edit menu and choose sky replacement, which is going to take one sky inside of your photograph, mask it, and replace it with a different sky of your choosing. In which case I end up with this intense effect right here, but I still have that extra blue sky in the crook of his arm. Another relatively recent addition to the automated selection tools is this guy right here, the object selection tools. It doesn't just select objects as we'll see. Notice it shares a keyboard shortcut with the old wand tool, but it's nothing like it. And so right off the bat, you can see that it highlights the area that it's going to select. I'll just click in the mountain range in order to select those mountains independently of the sky and the trees. And then I'll click on the mask icon in order to mask everything else away. And you can see if we zoom in here, that we have some pretty tight looking edges, especially along the tops of the peaks. And I think things look even better if we set them against a black background. Now, in addition to clicking with the object selection tool, which as we saw, selects the mountain range in the case of this image. But let's say I also want to select all these foreground trees. Why then you can also drag with this tool in order to encompass everything you want to select. By default, the mode is set to rectangle, but you can lasso the object as well if you prefer. But notice in my case, I don't get all of the trees. And so I could fight with this tool if I want to, or I could just switch to the quick selection tool which is set to add to the selection by default. And notice as I paint, I am adding these trees. I'm doing a pretty rough job at this point, but good enough. And so as soon as I click on the mask icon, you can see that I end up getting more or less exactly the selection I want. Now, as long as we're on the topic of the quick selection tool, I want to share with you this top secret setting that is turned off by default. And so I'm just brushing in these mountains and now I'll click on the mask icon in order to make everything else go away. Things look pretty good from far away, but notice if I zoom in, we have these sort of roughly defined gummy looking edges. And so I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that we can compare that to what happens when you turn on this checkbox right here, Enhance Edge, which does exactly that. It enhances the edges. It is turned off by default. I have no idea why, but now notice when I click 
on the mask icon and zoom on in, you can see that we have much cleaner, better defined edges indeed. Now I know after all this, there's gonna be a couple of you that are thinking, you know what, thanks a lot, but I'm just gonna stick with the magic wand tool. In which case, do yourself a favor and go up to the select menu and choose the color range command. This command was designed to be the replacement for the magic wand tool more than 30 years ago. The mistake that Adobe made was they left the magic wand tool in the software so nobody even knows this command exists. And so I'll just go ahead and choose it. Notice we've got a dialog box, don't let that throw you. And we're seeing a little preview of what the selection outline will be. So white equals selection, black equals deselected. I'm gonna move my cursor outside of the dialog box. It looks like an eyedropper. Pretend it's the magic wand tool. I'll just click in order to set a base color. Notice that I changed my selection preview right here. I'm gonna select the sky both below the horses and above so I don't have to change the checkbox setting. Now I'll just click okay and I'll click on that mask icon right there. Now I've got to invert the mask so I'll press control I, command I in the Mac and check out that mane. It is in such better shape. Now, in case you're thinking, wow, that color range command's not half bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. I'll go up to the select menu and once again, choose color range. Now I could talk all day about this dialog box. If you want an entire week devoted to it, just let me know, subscribe, turn on notifications, but notice right now that the preview is black, meaning that I'm not gonna select anything, which is why I need to move my cursor out into the image window, pretend it's the magic wand and click to set a base color for my selection. Now a lot of the background is turning white as you can see. That means it'll get selected but the area above her head is kind of dark gray and then we have these dark spots in the corners which tells us they won't get selected which is why I'm going to take advantage of the fuzziness value. Notice if I crank it up I'm adding white to the preview, which means I'm gonna select more of the image. If I take the value down, then I have less white inside the preview and I'm gonna select less of the image. I'm gonna split the difference here. Actually, I'm gonna double the default value by taking it up to 80. And then notice that she appears black against a white background. I want it to be the other way around. I wanna select her. So I'm gonna turn on the invert checkbox. That way I don't have to invert the layer mask later. This is nothing, this is just the beginning of what you can do. I'll click OK and I'll drop down to the mask icon and click on it and we end up with these amazing curls right here. Just this awesome detail right here. It's not perfect. It will be in just a moment, but I'm going to turn on the purple background just to make things easier even that much more clear. Hey, real quick, wanna know the ultimate way to remove a background? Combine your choice of the other 14 ways together. For a great example, join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. I've set the woman against a bright blue background just so we can make out very easily all the problems with the mask. So anywhere where we're seeing blue indicates a hole in the mask that we need to repair. This includes her eyes and the highlights in her hair and her teeth and so forth. And we're gonna fix those holes using one of the simplest tools in Photoshop, the brush tool, which you can get by pressing the B key. You wanna make sure your layer mask is selected in the layers panel and that white is the foreground color down here at the bottom of the tool box. Then I'll right click inside the image window. The size value doesn't really matter. That's up to you. But the hardness value needs to be 0%. You need a soft brush. At which point I'll paint inside of her face and you can see that all that aberrant blue stuff goes away. However, I don't dare do that in the hair because I'll reveal the original background. And so the trick is to change the mode setting up here in the options bar to overlay. And that way, even if you paint in the background, you're not going to hurt it. And yet, then you can paint inside the hair and notice that I'm getting rid of those aberrant blues. Can you see that? And I'll paint over here on the left side as well. And so just to give you a sense, I'll zoom in a little bit here so that we can see more of the hair. This is before, notice all those blues all over the place, and this is after with far fewer blues. And if you're still seeing some, you know, whatever your background is, then paint some more. You can paint multiple brush strokes. Now I want you to notice this, this is killer. See all these faint hairs that are showing up in the blue background? Those are hairs that are not properly masked. And so what we need to do is swap the foreground and background colors just by clicking this swap icon so the foreground color is black. I'll make my cursor a little smaller, my brush that is, and then I'll change the mode from overlay to soft light. 
That way we will do a subtle job of painting these phantom hairs away without making the transitions around the hair too brittle. And we end up with an effect like that. We still need a little more paint over here. And we might need some more work, but it's amazing what you can do in such a short period of time. This is before with all this blue all over the place. And this is after, thanks to painting with the overlay and soft light modes. Now we'll take a look at a little known, I think it's safe to say hidden feature known as edge detection. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is get my eye object selection tool and click inside this tree, which is crazy complicated and set against a similarly colored background. So it's not surprising that when I convert this selection to a mask, our edges are pretty garbagey and they'll look even doubly so if I turn on this purple background. So you can make out that we have some bad edges. At which point I'm gonna go up to the select menu and instead of choosing select and mask, I'll press the shift key and choose the command to bring up this dialog box. Notice edge detection radius right at the beginning and then you just wanna set it to something. Just try, in my case, I'll set it to 50 pixels. And what we're doing, I'll turn on show radius right here. We're saying 50 pixels around the edge. We want Photoshop to reevaluate those edges and make different determinations. And if it's not enough, then you could crank this up to 100 pixels. You can go as high as you want. And you can see that all these areas that are not black are being reevaluated. If you want Photoshop to help you out a little bit and determine which edges need the most attention, then turn on the Smart Radius checkbox right there and your edges will change as we're seeing here. If you don't want to see that those edges anymore, just turn off show radius in any event click OK and you have made your changes at which point I'll go ahead and zoom in let's say up here at the top of the tree is a good location just so you can see before and after all right, I think this one's going to absolutely amaze you. We're gonna start off the same way with the object selection tool. I'm gonna to click inside the tree in order to select it. And then I'll go ahead and convert that selection to a mask and turn on the purple background so we can see just how horrible this mask is. Now you wanna go up to the select menu and choose select and mask to enter the enormous takes over your screen select a mask workspace. Here's our guy right there, the refined edge brush tool, such a wonder. Now you can use it in one of two ways. You can just paint around the edges like so, in which case if you start painting really quickly, it's going to have troubles keeping up with you. Do you see that? It's not doing anything on the fly. After which one, I just have to kind of wait for a second and let it catch up. And that is a function, by the way, of this checkbox right here, real-time refinement. So notice it is still doing its thing. And so what I'd like to do is not have it do its thing all the time on the fly. So I'll turn that checkbox off. It doesn't hurt anything to turn it off, by the way. It just means you're gonna see a bunch of white blobs as you paint, or at least you're gonna see the original background, which is that sky. I could even come down here and paint inside this little lamb if I want to. And then you just have to wait for the command to do it thing. After which point, it's going to look a heck of a lot better. And if you're happy with things, just go ahead and click OK. And we end up with this much better result. And I'll just go ahead and zoom in on this location right here. So you can see here's before and here's after. So much better. It's the Refine Edge brush tool, my friends. Which one's your favorite? Did I miss one? Comment. Not to mention like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And to turn this into this, complete with an integrated shadow, join me at patreon.com slash deke now. And then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.